Hello and welcome to another Pride edition of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Podowitz and I'm really, really looking forward to speaking with Sylvia Korinsky, who is a guest on our show today. Sylvia, hello. Hello, Julie. I'm happy to be here. A little nervous, but happy to be here. Nothing to be nervous about. Nothing to be nervous about. I you know, I just met you about four minutes ago. Mm -hmm. I know your wife quite well, uh, Jane Salerson, right? Yes. Who probably many of you in senior living know, or at least know of her great reputation. But Sylvie, it's all about you today. So tell us a little bit about like you and what you do for a living. Okay, so um, I am in senior. I am in senior living, thanks to Jane. Actually, um, we were dating, and uh, she um, introduced me to senior housing. Um, she thought I would be good at it, and she thought I would like it. Little did she know that I was uh, terrified to be around seniors and um, never wanted to be old. So, but she talked me into it. She was like, listen, I think, I think it, I think you'd be really good at it. And uh, I tried it. And 15 years later, here I am in senior housing. I'm in sales and marketing. Um, I worked in communities for many years, and then I became a sales specialist about five years ago. And for the first time in my career, I actually work for the same company as Jane. I work for Charter Senior Living now. And and I do um, basically one-on-one -on -one training with the sales with the sales team. So I do coaching and mentoring with the salespeople at Charter, and I love it. It's oh, it's great. Beautiful. Yeah, it's so yeah. well near and dear to my heart. It just uh, our team does similar yeah. uh, things, and, and and you know, selling senior living we all know is extremely difficult. And well, we all know, but uh, yes. people who sell other things or in other businesses yeah. probably don't appreciate the, uh, I mean, the logistics, but also the nuances and the skill set really needed, right? And it's a, it's a, a coaching and support mm -hmm. is so appreciated and needed in every, in every where, any, any place you want to improve, but certainly uh, selling seniors housing. Absolutely. I always, I tell the people I work with, I'm like, if I didn't live with Jane, right? If I didn't have Jane coaching me, uh, when I first started, I don't think I would have ever made it right because because of the nuances, because, you know, well, at least 15 years ago when I started there, there were training programs, but there wasn't a lot of support, really. Right. It's like you learned a couple of things, but um, there just wasn't enough support for salespeople. And I say it all the time. If I didn't have Jane to really coach me through what I was experiencing on a daily basis, I, I really don't think I would have ever made it as a salesperson. Yeah, I wish everyone, yeah. I hope lots of people listen to this and it's you know, probably because I just, I know firsthand, you know firsthand, it's not learning it, you know, doing, it, learning the sales process and the systems and, and, and how it all puts, it is put together is pretty simple, but, but that's not what it, it's at practice and and, and, you know, you take it to, you know, maybe this level with the, some of the training. And then if we don't get the coaching and the support and the help, and yeah. then people quit because they get frustrated or they're yeah. let go because they're not producing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so true. It's really there. And just like you said, you said it perfect. Like there's so many nuances in, in our, in, in what we do. Right. And um, it, it, you really have to be able to, uh, take all the knowledge that you have and and use it where it's necessary, right? And and just pivot and, be, and really be able to analyze the situation and and you know have different different um, uh, a different way of guiding each and every family. They're they're all unique, you know. Even though their situations may not be unique to us, what they're going through is very unique to them. And how we how we're able to help people changes from family to family. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so important to be able to really um, just be there for the families and take what you know and, and share it in a way that they're going to understand it and be able to use it and, you know, and to, to, to be able to help them. Um, yeah. So, and I always tell, I always tell salespeople, you know, it's, we also have to be able to coach adult children 
right? Because they, they may not know how to speak to their parents, right? And we know parents don't want to be parented, right? So, and then you have the adult child who's trying to tell their mother or their father what to do. And that just makes them dig in even harder, right? I mean, there's just, yeah. 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 There's because just, oftentimes, just a lot. Yeah. We send yeah. Uh, the adult child, I, I adult child, uh, mm -hmm. parents that out into that, that cold hard world of talking to a parent who is going to say no way, mm -hmm. no way. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a challenge in of itself. Absolutely. You, know, you talked about Sylvia, you just mentioned in supporting families and supporting the individuals that support families that everyone has a unique story, which mm -hmm. is true. And I would very much like to maybe learn a little bit more about your unique story, since this is the Pride edition mm -hmm. of uh, Grow Your Occupancy, if you wouldn't mind sharing just a little bit about maybe your background and, and uh, your journey really through coming out and being you and a little bit on that personal side. Sure, sure. So for me, I... Um, um, I had to move away from home, right? So I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I was living in Manhattan and I had the opportunity to move across the country and get as far away from, from uh, my life as possible. And um, in order to really find out who I, who I am, who I wanna be, um, to give myself the freedom to be who I, who I am and who I thought I was and just figure myself out, um, so when I was uh, uh, in 1992, so I think I was about 23, 24 years old, I moved to Seattle uh, from New York and uh, just started a new life for myself, really. Um, it was a wonderful time for me. Um, at the time in 92, Seattle, uh, you know, I always like to say there were just a lot of us misfits moving to Seattle and to figure out you know, our lives. And I was really able to find a group of women um, that I'm still friends with today, uh, all these years later. Um, and we really all grew up together, um, really to find our, our voices, who we are um, in the world. I became very involved, you know, um, I'd never participated in a pride parade. I had never really been involved in, in the queer community very much. Um, I knew I was gay, but I didn't um, immerse myself in a queer lifestyle by any means. Um, and uh, when I moved to Seattle, I was able to do that. And I did that with a really just such a supportive group of women my age um, who are also figuring, you know, ourselves out. And um, like I said, we all just grew up together. Um, and it was just a wonderful time uh, for me, actually, um, to be in Seattle and be able to live my life the way I the way I, I want to. And when I came out to my parents about a year later, my mom wasn't surprised and my father was like, uh, all right, what are we going to do? Right. So neither one of them were were unkind to me. Neither one of them were unaccepting. Um, of course, you know, my father had a little bit of a harder time uh, with my lifestyle um, than my mom did, but, uh, but it all worked out and we're, you know, turned out that my sister's gay also, and she's married with a daughter. And, you know, my dad likes to joke, oh, um, you know, he's very proud of his two lesbian daughters. So, <laughs> Um, well, I have lots absolutely. of questions or comments. Well, first of all, uh, 1992 Seattle, my mind just goes to Pearl Jam. It just goes to the, mm -hmm. the whole grunge scene, right? The yep. 92, right? Isn't yep. that one? Yep. You know I mean? Abso and, absolutely. Yeah. And but there was but there was an amazing women's music scene also, right? Like that's when Lilith, Lilith Fair was Lilith came out Fair. what in like yes. 90, you know, just all women bands. Not and women, I yeah. went, I went to those. You know, I went to to those shows and was just um, yeah. And, and I was also, you know, I saw you know Soundgarden in very small venue and and Pearl Jam and all of these bands. Unfortunately, I never got to see Nirvana, but um, you know, but I I but I was very much also uh, 
you know, involved in um, like Bikini Kill, like just all of these women's yeah. bands, L7, Hole, um, you know, just yeah. Sinead O'Connor. These were, th this was the music that I grew up with sure. back in the, in the 90s and just absolutely loved. Um, Sinead O'Connor, I still listen to her too. And Hole also, I listen to all of that music. Isn't so that Slater, Kenny, yeah. there were just so many great bands um, at that time. So I love it. A yeah. um, couple of things you mentioned, I, and I had to jot down, you said um, you knew you were gay, but you didn't immerse yourself or didn't live a queer lifestyle. What's the difference mm -hmm. between being gay and living in a queer lifestyle? So I use, you know, it's funny, I use queer and gay interchange, like to me, they're the same thing, but mm -hmm. really, um, I, I mean, I see queer as like the umbrella, right? And then you have, you know, under queer is, you know, LGBTQ plus A, you know, all everybody, right? And I think it also includes, you know, uh, straight people who support the, the queer community also, right? Just under that, under that umbrella. Um, so I use it interchangeably, but I always did identify once I came out, I did identify as queer. Uh, more so than, you know, I would call myself queer, you know, and again, it just goes back to labels and should we be labeled anyway, but whatever. Right. So, but I just, um, yeah. So, so, but when I was in New York, um, I did, I just, um, I just didn't live, you know, uh, uh, I just wasn't, um, immersed in a queer, in the queer community, let's say. Right. And I, I didn't, um, like I said, I wasn't involved in, in any pride events. I wasn't really involved in, sure. yeah, I just yeah. didn't, I wasn't out. Right. I mean, gotcha. I knew, but I wasn't out gotcha. and I wasn't living and I, yeah, I just wasn't gotcha. living an authentic life, I guess. Got it. You know? Yeah. And why you said, of course, I needed to leave. I needed to go away. Yeah. Why was that? Cause I don't think I would have ever, uh, I mean, eventually, right? Eventually, uh, you know, my, I think we all hopefully come out eventually. Um, but I think for me, it was just a lot easier to get away from, um, you know, the life that was expected of me, I guess, right? Like to, um, you know, date men and get married and do, you know, just do all these, you know, the, this life that my parents had planned for me. Right. So, um, I think in order to really get to know myself and how I want to live and who I am, I, I, I did, I just needed to leave. Gotcha. It just wasn't it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't like you were escaping a toxic no. family environment or you, you just, you needed to, you needed to to start fresh. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to, right? Yeah. I, I just, I wanted a new experience. I just, I wanted to get, yeah, I just didn't want to be where I grew up, right? I didn't want to be um, in the environment that I had always known. Sure. Because I knew there was something more. Um, yeah. I just, I just knew there was something more for me to experience elsewhere. Yeah. I felt the same, you know, I mean, when I graduated school, yeah. there was nothing wrong, you know, where I grew up, you know, really, right. not, you know, nice family and everything, but I would, I wanted to explore, I wanted to get out and I wanted to do something different, you know, yeah. and, and there's not that there's anything wrong with staying where hmm. one, uh, you know, was born and, and living in the same town all the time, but yeah, I totally right. can, I totally relate to that. And then another thing you said was, you said, of course, my dad had a harder time with it. Why would that be? Of course. My dad is definitely more conservative. Oh, and okay. I, and I grew up in a house where even though I, I mean, like when I was 18, 19, I had gay friends. Um, it made him very uncomfortable to be around them. Okay. He didn't, he didn't want gay people in our house really right was he yeah vocal about that yeah oh yes oh he yes was. it made him it made him very uncomfortable and made him that very uncomfortable feel oh, I, that he was uncomfortable yeah you know i mean it's it, it's sad actually i mean it made me uncomfortable right but it also just made me really sad that he was just such a you know listen he's 
you know, I don't want to, you know, just very close minded, very, you know, um, I, you know, I don't know what the right term is when you're, you know, a hater or you don't really understand a people. I mean, it's not, I don't know if it's racist or bigoted or just, you know, I, I but I think it's just fear of the unknown, right? I think it, it is a lot of fear. I mean, because I don't think he's a bigot or, I, I mean, but I think if he doesn't understand people who aren't like him. Uh-huh. You know, and common, right? I mean, that's where yeah. this, the, the, this were yeah. you know, wars and over yes, religion, yes. you know, different if you're Protestant or Catholic and, and my, you know, my opinion is who cares, but apparently people go to war over it. People yeah. go to war over, uh, yes. we're yes. sort of in a war right now and right. about things yes. that are, in my opinion, uh, certainly not war worthy, <laughs> not I, even like disagreement worthy, you know, right. human right. Listen, if we're not, if as long as we're not hurting anybody, what does it matter? Right? Really? What does it matter who you love, who you want to be with, how you dress, um, whether you're, you know, gender bending or whatever it is, who who cares? I mean, I'm not hurting anybody. He's got a white, like a blazer. I've got this red Mm -hmm. shirt on. And, you know, is that bothering anyone? But if, if you, if I was in drag, Apparently, it would bother right. somebody. So I'm right. not quite sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't get it, Sylvia. Um, I I just I don't. I but right. I think I like you said though. I, it, it's fear of it's fear the unknown. Mm-hmm. But the unknown, like the it, it's fear of different. I think is it. Yes. Really? Yes. Exactly. It's fear of different. Because what is it, somebody like dressing up? Let alone, um, you know, mm-hmm. being. being like you said, who you love, who you are, who you are as a human. Mm-hmm. Okay. You may not, you could say, look, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be uh, born, uh, you know, g- male or identifying as male. I don't mm-hmm. know what that, I don't, never identified as male. Doesn't mean that I don't like or appreciate or, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, so it's like mm-hmm. just because you can't relate like the, you haven't had that experience I don't know I'm four eleven and a half maybe five feet sometime I don't right. know what it would be like to be five eleven right right you see the world it's a different perspective up there I would assume as somebody who's also five feet so I oh, totally understand okay. that yes <laughs> and it's like you know this the stupid <laughs> and it may be a stupid analogy Sylvia but right. it's really like if I'm asked, uh, and I'm 57, and if I'm asked one more time, like, how does it feel to, you know, you know, be, look up all the time? I, it's so offensive to me. It's right. like, seriously? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, it, you know, like you said, every, we have our own perspective. I didn't realize right. until I joke about it to like two years ago that I might have been like a little smaller than, you see group pictures? Do you ever look at yourself and you see a group mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, I guess I am a little bit... <laughs> smaller than you know <laughs> right. it, but I never think right. about it you know right. It's like, who right. cares right 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 it's, it's so what would you say is like what advice would you give a younger person going through finding out who they are right or you know it, it con- navigating at, at a young mm-hmm. as a teenager or preteen yeah. today you know, it's so, it's so hard for like, you know, you think about the generation before us, like before me, who made it okay to come out, right, at a certain age. And nowadays, like there are kids who come out in junior high and high school. And I can't even like, I just can't even imagine how my life would have been so different had I I been able to do that, right? Or I just... I don't know. I think it's so cool for those kids that that can happen to, right? Who are in that environment, right? Um, and I, I think the first thing I would say is just to make sure that you're safe, right? Especially in today's climate, I think making sure that you're in a safe space um, is really important, and that you feel supported. Um, and if you, I mean, and if you don't. I mean, my advice would be is to go out and find that community that you can be safe and um, and live an authentic life, you know, and it's just, again, I, 
you know, I would hate to, to give somebody bad advice or, you know, to say something that might be harmful. So I just, I really just want to, want to say how important it is to live an authentic life and to live and, and be who you are. Um, because eventually, um, you know, eventually that's going to have to happen, right? Um, because it all comes to a head at some point, right? Um, so, um, you know, to be dishonest, I think, in who you are um, with whether it's, you know, your, your, um, you know, you're, you're queer and, and you're, and you're dating a straight person and living a straight lifestyle. That's not, you know, I always think, well, that's not fair to that, that person. Right. So again, I just think, um, I, I, I think it's, I don't, I don't hang out with that many young people. I don't have children, so I don't, I don't really know, but, um, I mean, my advice would be to, uh, you know, just, um, make sure that you're safe and, um, and to live an authentic, uh, live, live your life as who you are, love who you want to love. And if you're not in the environment where you can do that, get to an environment where you can do that. And I think that there's a lot of support today in helping, um, our queer youth, um, get to a place where they can find community. It's so important. It, it's so important. Um, yeah. And it's amazing how we thrive and grow and become our best selves when we're in community, when we're around people um, who really care about us and that we can then and where you're free to be who you are. You know, I, I just think that's really important. It's, it's, so. it's challenging enough just period to know who you are and to, I, I mean, I, I think yeah. it's an evolving, you know, we're always sure. hopefully evolving yes. and growing and learning yep. and, and becoming and all of that, uh, let alone someone who's a teenager who, uh, you know, they don't have a ton of life experience or so much pressure, peer pressure, and, mm -hmm. and they may not, it may be somewhat subliminal even like, well, you know, you, you need to sort of do these things and mm -hmm. act these certain ways and, and, and be a pleaser or whatever it is, let alone to add to that, mm -hmm. to, um, to, it, it adds so many layers of difficulty mm -hmm. on already a difficult, because growing up and becoming, and, uh, you know, the social mm -hmm. media and, and bullying and ostracizing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so I think that is great advice. And I think it's also worthy just uh, worthy of mentioning that, that it's not easy, you know, mm -hmm. it's very difficult and to period know yourself or to mm -hmm. love yourself, right. Mm -hmm. If others don't love you or you, you mm -hmm. perceive other people mm -hmm. don't, or they make fun of you or you're mm -hmm. not. It, it, I mean, at, I think almost anyone could could relate to a feeling of holding yourself in or you know not being real. Right. And I had a, a this is just a stupid yeah. example, but um, yeah. and someone when I was growing up uh, who told me that you laugh too much. That boys are never going to be interested in you because you laugh too much mm -hmm. and. I still remember that thinking, oh my God, I, you know, because boys aren't going to, not that that was my big goal, mm -hmm. it really wasn't, but of course you're like, so in like, it, it wasn't until, I don't know where it was like, I realized that that was stupid, but I mm -hmm. took that as a fact because I was right. 14 right. and a male uh, family member told us to me. Right. And I think like how what a stupid thing to say and it really hurt me and that was like a tiny little minor thing mm -hmm. so you, you know these, these yeah it, it, it's difficult it's difficult to love yourself and it's yeah. okay if you laugh you know? People right. are gonna love right. you. it's like right. you are you you laugh a lot or you are a happy person or you're queer or you're petite or you're tall or you're you know whatever it's I just wish that maybe in our tiny little way that we could um, be positive, a positive message, you know, right. to, yeah. you know, cause there's just a lot, a lot going on. There is a lot going on. There is. And, but there's, is a lot of um, hope and love and, and um, 
just and a lot of community out there, even in the strangest of places, right? Where you don't think, right? I mean, um, where it may be, you know, harder to be queer in, um, you know, and not to mock the South or anything. It's nothing against the South. I've met so many wonderful gay people from the South, but um, but it might be a little bit harder, right? And but but it is possible, and there is community. Um, and I and you know there are gay people everywhere. So that you, yeah, we can, are. you know, <laughs> there we're, we are everywhere. And uh, <laughs> so even even in the in the tiniest of towns. So just again, it's it's about finding community and and being safe. And, um, you know, and asking for help if, if, if you need it, I think is really important. There's a great project that the, the um, it's called the it, it Gets Better project, right? And, and again, it's really geared towards queer youth because it does get better. Um, uh, you know, it's not always going to be or feel like it feels when you are 12 or when you're 15 or even 18 right I mean um and and finding yourself and um it's it's the it's a great project and and, and it's it's it, and, and it is really true it does get better right life does get better it's I mean I wouldn't go back and be a teenager for anything <laughs> you know <laughs> it just seems it seems really really hard really hard so well, yeah. Sylvia, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and, yeah. and your selling time, because we know that that is critically important in, in the business <laughs> that we serve. And yes. just talking, telling us a little bit about you and your story. And um, I am very grateful we did get a chance to meet and yeah. chat a little bit. And thank I hope to uh, continue the dialogue. And for any of you out there who are listening, who may need support, you know, it gets better, right? It.com Trevor Project is also mm -hmm. a wonderful organization, mm -hmm. or like Sylvia said, just reach out, find that mm -hmm. safe space and that mm -hmm. safe place because they are there. And there are a lot of people uh, that are, you know, open and loving and uh, will embrace you for you. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. Uh, in life, really. Mm -hmm. um, so on this uh, Pride edition, uh, we all know love is love is love is love. Thank That's you. Okay. Yes. And uh, thanks for listening to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy and Grow Your Love podcast. I'm Julie Potowitz. Thank you very much. Talk to you again soon.